Alright, so this is my second Mike Mensa's high intensity workout. If you want to know more about the experiment that I'm doing, I'm testing out this theory of uh, high intensity training proposed by Mike Mensa. It's extremely low volume compared to what um, a lot of other people preach. And if you want to know more about that, I'm going to leave a link on the video. Now, that being said, we're going to start off with our first exercise, which is the V squat machine. Now, I was doing barbell back squats in my first workout, so I can't compare if I made any progress or not. But what I found is that going to absolute failure, which is required in this program, uh, it was much easier using a V squat machine rather than a barbell back squat, mainly for safety issues, and I didn't have a spotter available. So I'm just going to stick with this exercise in future because I really can go to failure. I know there's no risk of injuring myself when I do fail. Now, I feel this exercise mostly in my quads um, and a bit in the glutes as well, and a little bit of hamstring also. Um, so, I've also complemented this with a 45 degree back extension, which you'll see later in the video. And I feel that that works the lower back really well, also hits the glutes and hamstrings pretty hard. So, I feel combining these exercises kind of covers the same bases that a barbell back squat is. Obviously, I believe the barbell back, back squat is superior. But um, this is the best that I've got right now, and it's the best substitute I can think of. And I like doing both of them exercises. So basically, on this exercise, I got 18 reps, which is um, outside of my target. I wanted 12 to 15 reps. So I know next time, in the next workout, I'm definitely going to add at least 10 kilograms to the weight. Um, maybe even a bit more, but we'll just see. Um, I'm using quite a slow tempo on these, that's why the weight isn't so great. I'm using 4 seconds up and 4 seconds down. Uh, that's what I've got in my headphones if you're wondering. Um, it's just a 4 second count on repeat, so I know that it's exact, so I can make sure that the progress is actually happening and I'm not manipulating the rep speed. Now as you can see it was getting pretty brutal at this point in the set, <laughs> oh, like I'm about to cry. Um, and it was it was pretty painful, but I, <laughs> I did enjoy it. And this is what I mean. Like, I just couldn't push myself this hard in a back squat uh, because I just didn't feel comfortable enough with the exercise um, to go to this levels. So uh, this is why I absolutely love this. Uh, I did try out the standard leg press machine as well, but uh, personally for me, I found this best. Um, so as you'll see now, I've just gone to complete failure there. I'm just going to take a few seconds and then I'm going to complete one slow negative rep. So I get it up and get myself prepared. Down we go. As slow as possible. And this if you add this on to the end of your set after you've already burnt them out going to failure this really <laughs> this really does do some damage um, and then obviously I have to do one last thing just to get the machine up and rack it ready for the next person now we move on to the next exercise here which is uh, the dips on the parallel bars uh, I'm using 10 kilograms here and my body weight is I think around 68 kilograms something like that um, as you can see, I get a really deep range of motion on these. Um, people have said that <laughs> they haven't seen many people get this kind of range of motion. Um, and it is potentially dangerous, so I don't advise everyone to go this low. Uh, personally, this feels absolutely fine on my shoulders. I do do a lot of shoulder work, a lot of um, rotator cuff things, uh, all the innies, outies, a lot of band work, band dislocations. Um, so I do have quite healthy shoulders. Now, that might enable me to do this, and obviously maybe my genetic structure um, also facilitates me being able to get this extreme range of motion. But um, I believe it's a great exercise um, for the front delts and triceps. It also hits the chest pretty good. Um, I think it, mostly for me, though, it is a tricep and front delt dominant exercise. But um, I'm trying to keep the volume as low as possible, so I'm not doing an extra chest exercise. This is just doubling as the chest, triceps, and front of the delts exercise. Now, as you can see, I just make that rep, and I can't do any more. <laughs> Perhaps I should have I should have tried for it, really. I shouldn't have just jumped off the bar like that, but it was getting pretty brutal at that stage in the training. 
Um, so on this dip exercise, I got nine reps, and last time I got seven reps, so that was an increase of two reps, which I'm extremely happy about. Um, as you can see here, I'm just in a slow negative. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm really happy about that two rep uh, PR there. I have gone a lot heavier on weighted dips, but you know, using that four second down, four second up tempo, it makes it a lot harder. Now here we have a narrow grip chin up. Using again the four second up, four second down tempo with a slight pause. I'm going all the way up so my head touches the ceiling of the gym. Uh, that's when I know I've completed a rep in the fullest range of motion possible on this pull up bar. Uh, so last time in my workout, I got six reps last week. Um, but this time, I'm really trying to push for that PR. Uh, but the problem was, is that, um, I'm already making excuses, but uh, I actually had no idea what rep count I was on. The only way I found out my reps for this workout was looking back at this footage, and I was that focused on what I was doing and going to failure that I had no space in my mind for figuring out how many reps I was on or keeping account of that. I was just too busy listening to the tempo um, through my headphones and focusing on all the muscles working. Um, so I actually hit six reps again, which isn't less. Um, obviously, I would have liked to increase it, and I believe I could have got that seventh rep, but I just um, am mentally just, uh, you know, I was just mentally weak. Not more can be said on that. Uh, so I do a slow negative here um, just to get some extra overload in. But yeah, I think definitely next workout, I'm feeling like seven or eight reps on the chin-up. Um, so yeah, it was interesting because people are saying you should definitely after a week, uh, you know, in this Mike Mensah's program, be able to hit that. Maybe that's because I didn't go completely to failure last week when I did my chin-ups. Who knows? Because this art of going to failure is um, is quite new to me, even though I've done quite a lot of training. It's rare that I ever actually push myself to complete failure because um, it's a very difficult thing to do. And obviously, I think as I get better at doing that, uh, mentally stronger at pushing myself to failure. I'll see the full rewards of this program. So here I'm just doing a weighted hang, double overhand, narrow grip. Um, did have a bit of chalk on my hands for this, and this is with 75 kilograms. Uh, so that's quite a bit over my body weight, and I just hung there for one minute. Now that's uh, an increase from last week of two and a half kilos. I did 72.5 last week. Uh, for one minute, so that's a nice little increase there on the grip strength. All of this was extremely challenging. So yeah, in total, I think this whole workout took me um, perhaps 40 minutes. I think it was about 40 minutes, so it's relatively quick. Because um, I, I like to take a, a long time between my exercises. I'm sure as my fitness increases, I will take less time. But just to mentally prepare, I was taking a good three to five minutes between exercises. So here we have uh, the 45 degree back extension. I absolutely love this. Um, I think it hits the lower back really well. And um, also I feel a lot of work in the glutes and hamstrings as well. Although this is supposedly an isolation, isolation exercise for the lower back. I don't know. I do feel a lot of activation in the glutes and the hamstring. Uh, so I think this actually complements the V-squat very well. And this and the V-squat, I think cover most of the bases that the barbell back squat would do. Obviously not quite as good, but um, the best I've got right now. So I don't know how many reps I got on this, but I got a lot. <laughs> um, I had no idea, because I've not, honestly, I've been training at my home gym, so I had no idea what I could do in this machine. Um, but yeah, I was going for a rep range of 12 to 15, and all I know is I got way above that, so uh, next time I'm going to hold on to some dumbbells or some weight plates while I do this. Um, because yeah, it needs to be a heavier load really because it was getting more towards the end of the set it was more like a kind of muscular endurance sort of thing which I didn't really want um, I like to keep it uh, really the set should last no more than a minute and a half or at least that's the research I've seen on it uh, so yeah, about I think roughly people say about 70 seconds is the best for uh, muscle size gains uh, I know that figure's variable but um, yeah, so <laughs> a minute and a half is probably definitely pushing it um, more on the muscular endurance side. Maybe I'm wrong, but um, it's all experience at the moment. This Mike Mentz's high-intensity training. Uh, I'm really liking it. Uh, it's freeing up a lot of time. 
because I'm just training on Mondays. Um, obviously, I will train sooner if I feel fully recovered. But at the moment, uh, between my first workout and the second workout, it took me a week of full recovery um, to feel like 100% back and ready to hit the gym. Um, obviously, when we hit the month mark, one month of this training, I'm going to measure myself back up and also take some photos so you guys can see if this program has worked. Um, I'm going to try it for more than one month, probably about two or three months. Um, and if I've not seen any change, then we know this program doesn't work, at least for me anyway. Um, but I, I've got a good feeling about this program, so we'll just have to see. Um, it's rare that I do exclusively bodybuilding stuff, so uh, I'm more into my strength training, like heavy one rep maxes and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is a really interesting change of pace for me and suits my lifestyle right now. So I think here I was just like kind of doing a slow negative, just holding at the top. It looks like I'm just standing up and it's no effort at all, but it, it really was burning at this point. Um, I think the camera angle is a bit deceiving as well. So yeah, uh, these clips aren't actually in the order that I did my workout. I actually started with the calf raise, then onto the V-squat, then the dips, and the chins, and the weighted hanging, and then I finished with this back extension. Um, but just the way I put the clips together, um, I did put the calf raise last. Um, just because I thought it'd be a bit boring to start off the video with this. Um, so I thought I'd put the squat in, because it's a bit more of an exciting exercise. Um, but yeah, on the calf raise, um, I think I counted about 31 reps, uh, whatever it was, it's definitely over the um, kind of 12 to 15 rep range that I wanted to go for. I mean, I say 12 to 15, I was thinking 25, I honestly, I don't know, I've seen some people <laughs> seem to think that, that 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 kind of 12 to 15 rep range is best, and others say you got to go really high, like 25, so I honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I think maybe, yeah, I think maybe I'll stick to 25 for now, 25 reps. Uh, yeah, you've heard me say it on camera, 25 reps. And that's, when I get over 25, then I'll do the progression. But yeah, on this, I definitely get over 25. And that was with 35 kilograms, I believe. So um, this only goes up in jumps of 10 kilograms, this machine that I'm using. But it's really good because it's got like a curved bar. So you can kind of hook your toes around and get a really good stretch. Uh, it's a bit different than just the flat uh, kind of foot placement bar thing. Um, but yeah, so definitely saw some good progress in my calves because last time on the machine I used 25, for, for 25 kilograms for 42 reps, which is quite a lot. So I'm not sure if my strength went up or what. But um, anyway, yeah, I've got 35 for 31 reps this time. So uh, I think I definitely saw some progress on that exercise, the dips, the hanging, um, and yeah, that's all I know for now. I obviously, I didn't progress on the chin ups, which was disappointing. And next week, we'll see if I can progress on the V squat exercise and the back extension as well. Uh, so, look out for that video. I'm going to be doing one for my third uh, high intensity training session. So, yeah, it should be awesome, guys. Um, and if you're thinking of trying it, uh, but you're just not sure, I'll probably hang on until I hit the month mark. So, that'll be two weeks from now and you can see if I'm getting any results from it uh, yeah naturally I have a very slim build so uh, definitely in that kind of ectomorph category um, so if it works for me then it could most likely work for you guys It always looks really strange in camera because you think, what am I doing shaking all over the place? But uh, if you could see my face in this set, it was extremely difficult <laughs> and my calves were burning. You can't really see that I even have any calves, but what calves I do have, they were burning, guys. Trust me, I'm <laughs> absolutely on fire. So basically, I took this set completely to failure, doing a slight pause at the top, getting a really good stretch at the bottom. And... Again, there was no tempo on this exercise, so I just did it slow and controlled as I possibly could. Uh, I definitely, looking at this footage, could control the negative more. That's evident. I seem to be dropping down way too quick. Uh, so that's something I'm going to try and take note of next time. Um, but, but, yeah. <laughs> 
but yeah, it's always the the camera never really quite captures the intensity uh, properly. I think maybe you could see in the V squat, you could see my face properly. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna work on getting some better camera angles as well. Obviously, I've just got to be considerate of everyone else in the gym um, and what they're doing. I don't want to get them directly on camera because they might not want that. Um, so it is sometimes difficult, but I will try and shoot the best angles for you guys. Uh, especially get some better angles for the dips and chin ups, definitely. Um, if that's possible, I will do it. Uh, so this is just a maximum hold at the top. So I just, after I've gone to fail, I just hop on straight up, hold it in a really slow negative, as slow as I possibly could. Um, yeah, that's the workout done.